Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Faludi. I'm going to talk to you about the environmental impacts of 3D printing. See, 3D printing is revolutionizing manufacturing, but will it also revolutionize the impacts of making things? Will it really eliminate waste? Will it eliminate shipping? Or will it actually cause more problems than it solves? Some colleagues and I at UC Berkeley Mechanical Engineering Department set out to find the answers, and what we found was surprising. First, how we measured things. To see if 3D printing was beneficial or not, we compared it to a traditional computer-controlled mill. There are many types of 3D printers. We just measured two, uh, FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling, that's like a RepRap or MakerBot, but the professional version, and an inkjet 3D printer, which lays down a layer of polymer ink and UV cures it. And we only looked at making things out of plastic, since that's what these machines do, so that Results aren't universally applicable, but I do believe that they're relevant to most additive manufacturing. Now, we used life cycle assessment to compare the two 3D printers and the mill, and this included the materials and the manufacturing of the machines themselves, as well as transportation, energy use, uh, material in the final parts, material wasted, and the end-of-life disposal of the machines in 22 different scenarios for how they're each used. To make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, we made the same parts in all three machines and calculated the ecological impacts per part per year. And we used a methodology called Recipe Endpoint H for the life cycle assessment that measures climate change, toxicity, ozone depletion, water acidification, eutrophication, land use, and a bunch of other impacts. And it normalizes and weighs these into a single score of generic units called points. Surprisingly, no one has done this before with 3D printing. Uh, most LCAs just measure energy use, which is not enough. If we measured only energy, the mill would score the best, absolutely. But if we measured only material use and waste, the mill would score the worst, by far. So, single score methodologies like this are necessary to balance. Now, they're not perfect, certainly, but they've de been developed over the past 20 years by environmental scientists through peer-reviewed processes, whereas the decision makers using these tools are product designers, engineers, business executives, etc. None of these people are environmental scientists, so they need single scores to make intelligent decisions. The alternative is guesswork and superstition. And to check against bias in the scoring method, we also ran the same analysis with a different method called Impact 2002+. And thankfully, the results were nearly identical. So we're pretty confident. Okay, so which is greener? Here's a very simplified version of our results. The inkjet printer had significantly worse ecological impacts than milling, but the FDM machine was a lot better. And none of them are as good as injection molding, though that's not a direct competitor because it can't do custom parts. The variation and uncertainties are also significant too. You see how the bars fade out at the top? That shows the variation among all these different scenarios we ran, plus about 10% fundamental data uncertainty. So a well-run milling machine could perform better than a badly run FDM machine, and an extremely well-run inkjet might score better than a moderately run mill. Now, this graph doesn't break things down into the impacts from energy use, waste, transportation, etc. I can't release the detailed analysis until the paper is published, but let me tell you roughly how it shakes out. The zero-waste myth was both confirmed and busted. FDM can sometimes have negligible waste, although so does injection molding. Um, however, the inkjet 3D printer wastes over 40% of its ink, not even counting support material, which could be more mass than your final part, depending on your orientation and geometry. And also, this waste can't be recycled today, unlike the waste of injection molding. Now, other researchers studying other kinds of 3D printers have found significant waste in some of them as well, but it varies a lot. Now, more surprising than the waste measured was whether the waste even matters. Um, for traditional machining, material use and waste is actually the largest impact, but for 3D printing, it's energy use. 
Material does matter, but it's not dominant. Um, and so reducing the amount of material printed is beneficial, and, uh, and it's a great thing that the FDM machine can print parts that are 90% hollow, although so can injection molding. Um, but the biggest benefit of hollow parts is actually that printing less material uses less energy. The manufacturing, transport, and end-of-life of the machines, both the 3D printers and the mill, were a small portion of impacts. They amortized away by high utilization. Transportation of the parts that you make with the machines are also usually a negligible part of their total life impacts. That's not from this study, that's just from my years of LCA experience. It's extremely rare that I see a product where transportation is the dominant impact. So even if 3D printing does make all manufacturing local, it doesn't really matter much. Now this is not the final verdict. This graph is for all the machines producing parts nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And any of these tools making a part just once a week, but left on for the rest of the time, had roughly 10 times the environmental impact of the same machine at maximum utilization. So even more important than what machine you choose is actually how you use it. You should share tools. Having the fewest number of machines run the most jobs. So how can we print better? Well, the best green 3D printing that I've seen is Marcus Kaiser's solar center. It fuses sand into glass with sunlight. He rolls the machine out into the desert, pours some sand in, and then the giant lens on top focuses sunlight enough to fuse the sand into glass in the bed. And then a small solar panel runs the hardware to move the lens and level the sand in the bed. Um, it uses 100% renewable energy with non-toxic, local, plentiful materials. It's fantastic. And despite what I said earlier about materials not mattering much, they can be very important. See, metals and plastics get 3D printed by melting them, which uses a lot of energy. But some 3D printers can use wood pulp with an adhesive binder. This uses radically less energy than melting things, and the adhesive could be chosen to be low toxicity, low resource use, even compostable potentially. Now, hundreds of materials are already available for 3D printing, and industry hasn't even scratched the surface of the green possibilities. So, while today's 3D printing is sometimes better and sometimes worse than machining, 3D printing has the potential to be enormously better. And we need to drive industry in that direction. That's it. Thanks very much.